Syntax effects block. Uh, it can be used for lots of cool things. One way that I have always wanted to use it is in a performance mode where the effects are less static and they can be readily toggled on and off. Uh, and this can actually be achieved by using fill conditions on the FX track grid. So let me show you an example of how to set that up. So first things first, we're going to go function effects uh, to root in the tracks that we want to be affected by the effects block. So in my case, going to do everything except the eighth track here. Uh, then we're going to enter grid mode on the effects track active and we're going to place a uh, trig right here at the beginning. Um, we're going to hold down, we're on the trig page already, and we're going to set a fill condition. So now this will only be active when you're using fill mode which is done by holding the page button outside of grid mode. Now, remember, I don't want the overall sound to change when I'm not using the fill mode, so the effects need to be parameter locked into this trig. Um, let's take a look at the track. Uh, yeah, I want this to have a crunch effect, so holding down the trig, I'm gonna go maximum overdrive. And let's adjust the frequency cutoff to around 90. So now theoretically, if I copy and paste this trig across the entire grid, I have an effect that is turned on by the fill command. Yeah, so let's see that. So the problem with that, as you can hear, is that nothing is telling the effects block to turn off, uh, or rather reset to the state it was in before the fill mode. So let's take a look at that first uh, trig and reset everything. And we'll remove the fill. Yeah, so let's try again. Now that's still not optimal because we can hear a distinct pop when the playhead hits that first trig. Um, one way we can optimize this is by shortening the FX track length. So let's cut that down. As you can see, uh, two is the lowest we can go. By the way, if you didn't know, you can use the encoder or you can just hit the trig to set the length. Okay, so now it's at two trigs. The second one is uh, where our effects are on and let's see. So that's better, um, and that is kind of a cool effect if you want to keep it that way, but that's not what I'm going for. Um, I can try increasing the scale. Let's go 2x. And that's too violent. Uh, so the real trick is to make that on-off as seamless as possible by using a false fill condition um, on the reset trig. So that's our first trig here. That's the fill that has a little bit of a, um, well, it has a line above it. Um, yeah, so that way, the second I let go of the page button, it's going to reset to the state it was in. Um, let's see. And that's exactly what I want to hear. Um, yeah, that's it. Let's try with a different effect. Let's do some delay. Um, that's it. It's another way to use your effects block. Let me know if you have any questions or if you come up with other ways to expand upon that. Um, obviously, you can make use of things like uh, LFOs on the effects track. I just wanted to do a simple demonstration. Um, that's it.